Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. I am Simeon Jimmy here at The Rectum, joined as always by the number one customer, Florian Himsel. Yeah, I, I'm here again, and I'm so disappointed once again in movie reviewers, especially our our guest, Kino Corner. What do you have to say in your defense? It's a great movie. No. Florian, you hate this film. <laughs> no. I I think this this film is like it's it's like kind of good, okay? It it could it has like some real meaningful shit in it, but then the the camera guy just flails around <laughs> with the camera for like 20 minutes. Hey, it was 2002. No fucking... Michael J. Fox was out of work <coughs> and they offered it to him. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, Give they, the they man a break. Someone who could hold the camera still, yeah. <laughs> but but they they can have like a, an uninterrupted rape scene, and and the camera guy just goes crazy, you know. Well, no, the camera guy good, just fucking fell asleep during the rape scene. He didn't try to help at all. He just set the camera down, and nothing happened. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's actually a, help. That'd be there, there's a little <laughs> bit of a of a meta part of that um, that rape scene, so. The whole point of the movie is like it goes from like the opening yeah the camera is like all over the place and it does work a lot better on the big screen than on the small screen it's well meant to, to be sort of fair match. Kino, uh, despite being the richest of the group florian refuses to watch feature films on a screen larger than his fucking laptop so <laughs> the effect worked great for me on my normal fucking tv but florian like bending over his phone on the toilet <laughs> watching the movie he probably did not get the intended effect from the filmmaker like I mean, it matches, like the whole sequence in the rectum, I think, is pretty masterful because it matches like this insane, nightmarish, like just complete rage filled. Um, you know, you feel like you're walking through not like a normal club, but like walking through somewhere in a dream or a nightmare. And um, and while we're talking about the beginning, I was saying this a little earlier, is that Irreversible is the third film in a trilogy. Um, and so the other two films follow a character called the butcher and the f- movie opens up on that character, the butcher, the fat, uh, naked French guy at the beginning. Oh, okay. And so the first film is a short film called Karn. You can watch on YouTube for free. Um, it's like 30, 40 minutes and it's about him as a butcher having his daughter, his daughter gets sexually assaulted. He goes and he, uh, dis- and he completely like maims this guy, like disfigures him. This the wrong guy, and he goes to prison for it. And then, and then Gaspar Noe's feature film follow up to that is called "I Stand Alone," which I think is actually way more nihilistic than Irreversible. It's way more of a black pilled movie, and it's about him coming out of prison after like two or three years. He uh, he gets this wife who. Um, he gets this wife who is like this fat, like uh, he he calls her like the fat cunt, um, and, and the, like the the movie is filled with slurs and <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe you would like it. Um, I mean, it's like about him be- if it's anything like this. <laughs> um, well, it's shot more like a traditional movie, and it's kind of like Taxi Driver if there's absolutely zero optimism. Um, and like, just like, like the effort being called out a million times, you know, just, just like, just so, so much profanity with, with no meaning. Well, he, um, he just like hates the world. He like, uh, his wife gets pregnant and he like beats her up and makes sure to punch her belly several <laughs> times. Goes on the, like goes on the run Damn to it. Paris, tries to get it, tries to get a job, hates everybody, um, starts like it's been a little while since I've seen it, but it's just about him getting lower and lower and lower. And then he's able to meet up with his daughter and it ends with the implication that, um, he slept with his daughter. What an Um, old boy. And so then, uh, years later, 10 years later, he gets out of jail and that's where irreversible, uh, kind of kicks off. So, so the daughter is not the woman that got raped in this movie. So, so he didn't no. Get no, all that backstory right. was just so we understand the three-minute cold open scene where some random fat naked guy is talking about fucking his kid. 
So yeah, I'm glad we finally have context for that. So uh, that, that how comes, about the rest of the film, Florian? What do you think of Irreversible? Rated R. It's well, rated. I, mean, I, I think it was might be NC-17. I hmm. think it was unrated, actually. I mean, if you throw away like the first half an hour or, or like cut it down to a minute, then it'd be maybe like a, a six out of ten movie, I, I think. But if you cut like, out if, the first half, well, you the cut first it half down. Is the superior half. Really? Yeah. That was the superior. What? What? The one where the camera just goes crazy. You're really into that. The Man's Revenge Tour is much better than and Kino. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh, the cringe fest that is the dramatic irony displayed <laughs> in the final scenes of the film. My eyes have never rolled so far back in my head in what was otherwise a amazing film. Wow. Yeah, I guess we got the complete opposite opinion then. Okay. I, I think we do, but that's fine. That's a good discussion. Let's hear, uh, you know, we'll fill in each other's gaps on what was good and what was bad. Well, well I want so, to say about the dramatic irony part is that the whole point of the movie is the, the movie was inspired by this book called, uh, and, and, they, and they talk about it once or twice in the film, um, written by J.W. Dunn called An Experiment with Time. And it uh, essentially posits that people can have dreams of the future um, or they can have sort of like premonitions about the future in their dreams. And, uh, and this book was written in the 30s and it kind of asks this question of does the future influence the present um, more than we think? And that's kind of what uh, Gaspar Noe is, is going for with Irreversible, which is why, like, they recently released the straight cut, um, which the straight cut of the film is They cut out all the gay chrono- scenes? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's told in chronological order, which I think completely kind of goes against uh, what the, f- like... It makes the film what- way less interesting to do that. Yeah, yeah, because the thing is, is that when they're at the party and when they're doing all, and when they're hanging out um, in the second half, in the very kind of chill second half, um you have this like having knowing like how the night ends for them there's always this sort of uh this kind of uh fear uh, underneath all of it knowing how this all ends and then it's and it's able and you know and you're able to kind of see how little things like lead lead to this like a uh, um pierre given marcus um at hill you know in the in the subway that fucks him up and then that leads to you know all these things and then pierre say no like oh i'll walk back with you and then monica Lewinsky is like no 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 you don't have to walk back with me and then he doesn't and you know and then she goes to the one girl on the street she's like oh underneath is is safer like all these little like and, and there's more there are more things that lead to this event happening just little things that you wouldn't even notice but well yeah and i i like the subtlety i say keep it subtle it's the lines of dialogue where they outright state word for word the events that will happen later in their day that they could not possibly know that's the lack of subtlety that what i'm was, criticizing what was the, what was what was the last? Oh, there's there's like the twelve line? of them. The dude's like, oh, I want to fuck your ass. I'm gonna fuck your ass tonight. I can't wait to fuck your ass. He's like, uh, holding her down, you know, um, in a similar position, uh, and raping her like in in the morning. But like it's a consensual rape. She's talking on the subway about how a man just needs to be selfish in bed and do what he wants and forget about the women's pleasure. Like all the things that will happen to her that night. Very on the nose. Uh, at the very well, ending shot when she's laying in the grass outside, the girl with her strap undone is laying in the exact same position that she is when she's getting raped. You know, I don't think too that much. the strap undone thing was, was, I don't think that that means anything. Yeah, I agree. It means nothing. So why even put it in there? Because if you're at a French, if you're at a French park, if you're at a French park, of I was. I mean, look that. at look at the side by side. It's very specifically the same uh, position, and like he undid her straps well, her dress in the same way. But that she's lying down on on her stomach with her hand. yeah with her straps on their top. Yeah, but undone, that's like you go you and go she to has a, her legs in the same position. Like you're getting fucked from behind. You, you go to a French park. I've seen plenty of women, you know, like that because they don't want the uh, bra tan <laughs> line. You know. Okay, wow. so I, I didn't, I didn't defend the other like ones I named then, since you're going to discredit that one. <laughs> that's <amazing. laughs> yeah, I guess the, that's just how French women lay. Wow, that's crazy. 
No, I mean, it's just, you know, I know, well, even Americans Yeah, this filmmaker's known to have coincidences in his movies by mistake. I mean, I mean, I didn't, I didn't he's pick French, well, Argentinian and French, but, um, yeah, no, like the, okay, sure, I'll get, I'll give you the, uh, um, I'm gonna fuck you in the ass line? Fuck you in the ass, oh, I'll give you the, fu- the, the fuck you in the ass Little line, cringe. it didn't take away, it didn't take away from the movie for me. Like it, that's also just something like it seemed natural in, in the uh, in the scene too, and a lot of the dialogue was um, came up with you know on the day of shooting or uh, on the spot, and it was it's not really you know, well thought out. What I'm saying is that you know it's it like it could be intentional. It also could, maybe it's not intentional. Um, like the idea behind the movie actually initially was just to have a porno with. Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassell. Um, what? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Gaspar Noé, uh, the provocateur director, um, and uh, he went to Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassell, who were like the uh, the Brangelina of their time of France. And for all the Zoomers out there who don't know, Brangelina was like the biggest power couple in like the mid 2000s. You know, we had Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That was like a big deal because it was Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Well, in France, they had Monica Bellucci, who I might say far hotter than Angelina Jolie and Vincent Cassell. Um, And so Gaspar Noe went to them and said, hey, um, I want to do a porno with you two, real sex, <laughs> like the real thing. It's going to be beautiful. And they said no. And then they said, but we'll do literally anything else. <laughs> so, wow. so, so, um, he got, so he got the, the money for the movie just based off of, they said, yeah, we're down for anything as long as it's not just a straight up porno. Um, and so that's how he uh, got Irreversible made. That is fucking insane. Holy shit. <laughs> so if you want to make a movie, just go to a Hollywood A-list actor and tell them that you want to make a porno with them. <laughs> I mean, that was the non-working approach, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I really want to hear from Mumkey what, what he likes about the first part of the movie. Like, in the first 20 minutes, basically nothing happens, right? Am I wrong about that? No, I think his search through the gay bar where every single nook and cranny and turn he makes, he finds the most degenerate gay sex. I felt like I was watching the movie Bros on steroids. Um, and I'd say this is the, the most realistic depiction of a gay culture I've seen since Bros. So my hat's off to Gasper No Way for that one. Uh, but it's very, wow. like, the camera work is nauseating, and I feel like I'm this guy who has taken all these weird drugs, some random fucking pill, I just saw the love of my life, like, beaten to death in the street, and I want revenge, and I'm coked out of my fucking mind. This is, like, the dizzying, intense feeling, and I felt it as the viewer at 9 a.m. this morning. I, I felt like <laughs> I was this man. So I, I thought it was very effective filmmaking. The, uh... Also, the director makes a cameo in the uh, rectum scene. Oh no, is he getting his dick sucked or something? <laughs> no, it's it's like literally a second and a half of him masturbating on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I felt like that was the entire movie anyway, so I guess that <laughs> wow. makes perfect we sense. We need to do like uh, like a competition, like him and Uwe Boll, like who has the better cameos in their movies. We should do a bracket <laughs> of the greatest director cameos it's- of all time. Yeah, it's uh, Gaspar Noe, Uva Bull, Alfred Hitchcock. Quentin um, Tarantino saying the N-word like in every movie Quint- is pretty good. Yeah, Wes Anderson being Wes Anderson in his movies. Um, uh, who you else? were really who, good uh, in, I guess it wasn't really a cameo, but you were really good in Wasted Hours. <laughs> um, uh, who else? Um, Richard Linklater and Beavis and Butthead do America as the tour dri- tour bus driver. Okay. Did he direct that? Yeah. No, Mike Judge directed that. Yeah, that's that. not a director cameo. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but Richard Linklater was in um, Slacker and he was in Waking Light. He's been in several of his movies. Yeah, we'll have to do a director cameo yeah. uh, ranking list. Did Chef do anything funny in uh, the Iron Man movies? I guess Happy is kind of bigger than a cameo, though, that character. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to Irreversible, Florian. Did you have any yeah. other questions for me? 
Such huge tensions, Jesus. <laughs> Welcome like, so, to the show. You just okay, but like, surely you didn't like anything about the fucking like fat naked guy saying he raped his his daughter and and like the hey. camera going crazy over <laughs> him. Listen, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah, one of my major the, something I say every single time this happens is I appreciate it when a movie shows me something I've never seen before. Okay, this <laughs> oh movie it might be disturbing and disgusting for many, but I have a Serbian film like in my top twenty-five. So fucking sue me. I like this disgusting, depraved shit. I mean, Skinnamarink yeah, showed you stuff you never seen before. Skinnamarink was boring as fuck. This movie is the inverse <laughs> Skinnamarink because the movie, instead of the camera not doing anything, the camera <laughs> won't fucking stop. I mean, it's oh, it's very but, boring too. It's just that forever. It's just at least the camera it's forever. Visually, it's just, something just, is happening, so I'm not watching paint dry. Yeah. No. The um. Oh, and the opening too, like that opening three minutes does create like a counterpoint to the rest of the movie. Because the guy says like, there are no evil actions, they're just actions. Well, he's and coping and what's seething his, at that point. <laughs> oh, he's, he's coping, he's coping, because then what Gaspar Noe does is takes us right from there into the fucking rectum, but it's like, The consequences oh, yeah. of actions immediately shown. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh yeah, th those guys are coping and seething, and uh, um, he's completely wrong. There, are, there are evil actions. Yeah, right. And Do we actually see what happens to the to the real rapist? He gets away. Yeah, but is he shown? Like, I, I yeah, he's shown. Yeah, if, yeah. If so this after movie makes any sense, he would be like the guy in the in the starting scene, right? But he isn't, is he? Uh, it, okay, so you know when um, when Pierre. Is is smashing the guy's head in with the fire extinguisher. Um, yeah. After he finishes smashing the guy's head in, the camera turns and shows Latenya smiling that he got away with it. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, absolute Chad. So, so yeah, he actually <laughs> he literally just walks right. away. He, he gets away he with it. He was right about the guy who raped his female girlfriend being in the gay bar. It was just the wrong guy. Oh my god. <laughs> because because he was so hopped up that he started a fight with the guy that he just assumed was Latenya. And yeah. it was the guy yeah. standing next to Latenya, <laughs> not Latenya. It's insane. Wow. I, yeah. I guess. Well, I mean, I you can't really expect me to notice that when the camera's shaking like that, but yeah. The camera does hold on Latenya for a good like six, seven seconds yeah, after yeah. that scene. Because I'm just yeah. so drugged out from the camera shaking, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that you can't, you can't, uh, you can't see the subject who's clearly in focus and big yep. on the screen. <laughs> just checked out in that moment, you know. <laughs> so Florian, other he checked, than he checked out that early on in the movie. <laughs> well, I mean, the I camera shaking really in. took him out. Yeah, I mean, other than the camera moving around in the, in the first half, what other issues did you have with it? I mean, I okay, well, I mean, obviously, I I hate the epileptic epileptic thing. I think that's just so immature, and like a lot of this movie is just so immature, just just saying faggot over and over. Yeah, wow, cool, well, cool hey, job. To be fair, this movie's made in two thousand two, and these are like homophobic characters. I. I, you know, I think it's like the most realistic thing I've ever seen on screen is all these men calling each other a fag. I yeah, mean, maybe, maybe realistic, but it's fucking immature as hell. This is like real like life is immature. So these, so these drunk, coked up guys calling calling dudes fags is like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I can't no, believe no. how immature they are. They might have <laughs> killed a guy with a fire <laughs> extinguisher in a gay club. But this is, they this shouldn't is be homophobic. Homophobia is where I draw the line. <laughs> this is the fucking thing that was written in the script, okay? F don't don't give me that shit, okay? Like, you have you complained about the six-minute rape scene yet? Oh, you're stick <laughs> yeah. the no, that, that's fine. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that was. I, I mean, you guys loved it, right? It was a no, I did not shot. love it. <laughs> Dude, oh, it's, you, you it's told well, me you, you love continuous shots, so you, this must have been like, continuous shots, all over this. Continuous shots not as in the camera sitting on the floor watching a rape, as in like the fucking True Detective tracking shot for always. 15 minutes. It was tracking stuff, there was a guy in the background and yeah, I it, walked it, in. And I like the tracking part, the... I, I don't like the fucking rape part, Florian, for goodness sakes. 
Okay. I mean, it's it's like I have to say this. It's it's really well done, and what he's doing in there is he's kind of sh- like he's shoving it in your face, and he's like forcing you. To, he's forcing you to watch to kind of experience just how bad it is. And I think that the rape scene, most um, the, the part that disturbs me the most about that is when that person walks into the background, stands there for a few away. seconds, and then walks away. <laughs> he didn't and, give a yeah. fuck. <laughs> Like, not yeah. my problem. See ya. I mean, the no, girl and, that and she you, saved also didn't do anything. Yeah, she ran off. Well, yeah, and, and, and it's like, at least. but it, and then and then Monica Bellucci during that scene, as I was I was saying that there's kind of a meta aspect to this. She she reaches out like towards the the camera lens, and it, and it seem and it seems natural in the scene that she's just trying to like reach out to crawl away. But it does have this like other effect where, especially if you're watching on a bigger screen, it feels like she's reaching out to you and then all you can do is sit there and watch it happen and not do anything. And I think that um, like maybe aside from the rape, one of the more disturbing parts of this scene is that um, most like most people, we like to tell ourselves that we're going to be the hero in these situations, you know, and maybe some of us will be. But I, I, a lot of people, a lot of people won't. Um, and I, I'm just reminded of this uh, this video I saw a few weeks ago. Uh, did you guys see that video in St. Louis of that guy? Uh, he takes like, felt like two minutes to reload a pistol. Like the guy had no idea how to reload a pistol. In broad daylight, and there's this bum on the street. And then he oh, puts the gun to the bum's yeah. head and then shoots him execution style. And, and these people are all crowded around just filming it the entire time. <laughs> really? Well, to be yeah. fair, though, uh, it's not like they can see the future, right? Like, we don't know he's going to literally <laughs> yeah, shoot no, him in he, the head. We're just filming oh, some he had tried to. He, oh, he, he, was, he had tried to, and he was out of ammo, and he put a new, and he was putting a new, like, magazine Oh, in, so, the, so they into, saw the intention and he yeah, well, they saw the, the intention homeless dude and was clearly was suicidal gonna, that he was sitting there waiting for it to happen get up and run the, dude, the he's home, reloading the, his gun the homeless guy was like totally zonked out of his mind oh man um, wow. and but these people were just standing around filming it and it was in broad daylight st louis you see you see cars driving by you know and everything I, like to be, to nobody be fair, tries to stop it what are you supposed to, to do fair. To be fair, well, I mean, filming him sure. is, is like incredibly more helpful than walking away. Because now he's like now oh, yeah. he's gonna get arrested like, now. Yeah, <laughs> like, like most people wouldn't go through with it if there's like a million cameras pointed at them. Okay, true. I'd be more scared so, of the well, cameras than guns. <laughs> than the gun. Yeah. I mean, he had he had the only gun, right? Remember, guys, if somebody's trying to kill you with a gun, just put out your take out your phone and say, uh, "What are you doing?" That's right. Shoot your. Uh, I'm streaming predator. live to Instagram right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that might be. I mean that's an open and shut. Case, uh, you'll you'll yeah. die. You'll die, but at least they'll go to jail. <laughs> that's right. Well, I mean, it's just yeah. a homeless guy. You know, it's mutually assured destruction. I mean, yeah. Wow, to be fair, probably. like. Like, to be fair, you know, would you want to, like, sacrifice your life over some zonked out bum? I mean, probably not, Blink will but... probably be pretty sad that his friend is gone, but otherwise. <laughs> you guys want to hear some, I got a new bit for you. It's called the Half Star Letterboxd Reviews of this movie. You want to hear some wow. of these? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are really funny. <laughs> Uh, nothing should ever make you watch the things this movie did, and I don't forgive the people who made this. Okay. Uh, I forgive him. <laughs> well, I, I I don't know how far he watched into the movie. <laughs> I wish hey, I could go I, back oh. in time and sabotage the invention of cinema just so this film had never been made. <laughs> wow. All I could think about... Wow. Wow, this is very telling. All I could think about is how many people who are fucked in the head that could have gotten off to the tunnel scene. I don't think there's any <laughs> That's way That's what she to... was thinking about! What? I don't think there's any way to get off to that scene. You're watching a that rape scene, scene and so you're like harrowing. fuming with rage. Like, oh, I bet some guy's jerking off to this right now. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? It's you know what? I think that's I think that's heavy projection. Yeah, that's what I'm I saying. Yeah, that is heavy projection. She's she's watching it, feeling things, feeling things in her. She doesn't oh, want to feel. God. She's like, I bet somebody See? else feels like me. Yeah, it is a woman. Wow. 
Uh, that is heavy so projection. I don't know anyone who's watched that scene that's come away going, yeah, you know no. what? <laughs> that scene was great. However, I just really hate the fact that people are probably jerking it. And it's like, what? <laughs> if someone said that, I, w- I would just be like, never talk to me again. <laughs> I Wait, finally got to the part of The Sopranos. I got to the Sopranos scene where this happens to Dr. Melfi, and at no point did I think, oh, I wonder if somebody was jerking off to this scene. <laughs> no, it's it was, I, and I think, uh, honestly, Sopranos rape scene mm, might have been more gruesome for me. I don't know. Side by side. Straw this, pole, this, scene, this scene is There's actually, no like, not as... Well, it goes on for a long time, but both characters are, like, pretty much fully clothed for the entirety of it. Um... Yeah, no, it's, it's like, well, he, but he's beating her to a pulp. You don't think that's worse? No, the the beat, I like the beating is off camera. They, I guess, they didn't have enough effects budget for that one. When he buddies up her face, you can't see it on screen. Yeah, huh. he's literally putting her face into like a uh, fake blood on the ground. <laughs> Wait, to be fair though, the the fire extinguisher <laughs> bashing that face in looked fucking awesome. Yeah, it does look fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah when it moves the <laughs> mouth a little bit, like it's still alive. Then yeah, that was yeah. some good editing. And he's just up. like, and he's like, stop awesome. moving. I, I, I love how, like, the fact that the guy's, like, just trying to, like, gasp for air. And Pierre is just so just hopped up on rage. He's like, stop moving. The guy's just trying to breathe. And he just, <laughs> just <laughs> continues bashing his face in. Jesus. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, you know, when I watched a, um, Saving Private Ryan, a D-Day scene of all of them, like, you know, Storming the beaches in Normandy and everybody getting shot. Half and you were death. booing and them thought, like, no, no, <laughs> no. And I thought, man, I really hate the scene because I know that somebody's, I know that one of those <laughs> neo Nazis out there is jerking it to it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, look at our superior German guns. Mm, yeah. Yeah, Florian, what movies do you jerk off to inappropriately? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, nothing comes to mind. Just Sorry. bros. <laughs> just bros. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, next week here in Austin, they're, they're doing showing a showing cruising. of bros. No, they're doing a showing of cruising on the big screen. Have you guys heard of that movie? No. What is that? Mm-hmm. So it's by William Friedkin and stars Al Pacino, and he's an undercover cop who goes under. He goes undercover into the uh, gay BDSM sex scene in New York <laughs> to find a serial killer. And it features a lot of real gay sex and what? The, like, yeah. And the movie is like almost all in BDSM gay clubs. I've and seen it. Like, it's your, actually not a. You bought your tickets actually, for the showing. I mean, that's course, kind it's, of fun. It's actually not. It, it's like a. I mean, it's a thriller. Um, and it's it was very con. It came out in 1980. Um, very controversial for its time. It would probably still be controversial today. <laughs> uh, for uh, homophobic reasons, or does it treat that community with respect? <clears throat> uh, both. Hmm. Okay, Impressive. that's fair. It, it's about it's about a it's it's about a gay guy who is rolling. He's cruising around these these uh these like clubs, um, uh, killing killing gay people, um, and so P- Pacino is trying to figure out who it is but to do that he has to essentially uh uh pose as as gay pose as like a gay uh um cruiser dude it's it's not a great movie but it's a fairly interesting one but that could be a good uh is it kino for later if we want to continue with the uh or a good movie for florian to inappropriately (laughs) masturbate to yeah wow hey i don't think it would be that inappropriate in some of the scenes on the the murder <laughs> some of them or the gay sex <laughs> good question it's, it's like it's it's like 90 minutes and 60 minutes of it is just is just gay sex and the other 30 minutes of it is mystery this is a film you watch for the plot <laughs> i imagine yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> uh, kino i mean you've made a whole video about irreversible uh, this movie you wanted us to review it uh give me your thoughts you know what what makes this movie stick out in your mind as so special so so the movie is definitely um it's a mixing, of, and, and this is kind of the kinds of movies I really like, which is where it merges exploitation film and art film. And, um, you know, I like I like a lot of those like 60s, 70s exploitation movies, like rape revenge films, or even like I Spit on Your Grave or you know, things like that. I have fun with those. A Serbian film is an exploitation movie. I think it's a really fun movie. Um, 
And but this, but Gaspar Noe, he's always trying to provoke. He's always trying to do something that like nobody else has done. Um, you know, with the camera movement and what he does, but makes it irreversible. I think staying out to me is something that is um, special. Is the fact that it's told in reverse reverse order. This came out around the same time as Memento, but it uses the reverse order. I think in a much more optimistic way than Nolan uses it. Um, what? Yeah, because optimistic. you know, oh, it is it is optimistic for the future. Then it, it actually has quite hmm. a, a a nice ending. Now what are you I, I, about? I got the exact opposite impression from the theme of this film. Like it, yeah, no. So obviously, obviously, it is it. devastating. Jesus. Obviously, so obviously, it is devastating. Um, especially when you find out that she's pregnant. So you know, she probably lost the baby in that scene. And you know, when she talks about the tunnel breaking yeah, she, in she half, she definitely lost the baby because she specific. It was specifically noted that she bled during the rape, as if she was a virgin. <laughs> but then we find out the real reason, which is the no, pregnancy. no, no, no. She she bled during the rape because she'd never been fucked in the ass. Well, th there are some who might argue that the, the final scene, which takes place at the beginning of the day, and she says that she's late on her period, maybe the period just decided to show up at a at this time. You know, that could be an interpretation. No, because she she um well, does the, she does the no, she does the pregnancy that's test and Oh possible. that's right. So she couldn't yeah, you know you're right. Because yeah. he said uh yeah, was, he said, are you wet or are you bleeding? And I'm like, well, the asshole doesn't normally get wet on his own, I don't think so. It's <laughs> yeah. probably blood. Yeah, and so, but what he does with this is he kind of does two things with manipulating time in, in this way. Where we see the violence first, right? We see all this violence first and we don't know where it comes from. So, like, so instead of... Um, showing everything happening and then going to the actual violence of it where we would like feel that emotion with the characters doing it in the opposite way the violence is uh is more isolated and it actually it's more brutal because we don't know what happened before you know and it's sh it, every bit of violence is shown like almost like out of context we we learn the context uh, as as we go, when you say into violence film. without context is less impactful and it, it means less no, to the audience because we don't know who these well, people yeah. are. So why the fuck would we care? Oh, it's, it's I mean, more it really in, it's more impactful watching it it's the more first time. It's more impactful with what he is doing with the movie, which is displaying uh, the brutality and the senselessness. Like the the movie is very anti-violence. It's 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 showing the brutality and senselessness of it. And how like every one of these actions is an act of senseless violence. It does like the context of it doesn't even matter. Um, I mean, it, I, I don't know this, about that. None of this. Well, you, you can't Florian. just say like it's anti-violence. It's like, like a porn is anti-sex. Come on, man. <laughs> Florian, no, let but, me ask you this though. Uh, based on the themes that Kino is presenting here, let me ask you if you agree with them, Florian. If your all-time favorite. Sugar baby, oh my god, what a beauty! Tall and Amazonist woman loves Rick and Marty. Beat ball frog in 24 minutes. This beautiful <laughs> six foot two woman. Uh, what if uh, she gets tunneled? You know, some bad stuff happens. She gets brutalized and beaten up. If you had the opportunity, Florian, would you not want to grab a fire extinguisher and bash in the face of the rapist who did that to her? Is I mean, that really no. so bad? Like, see, the whole point of of the sugar babies would be that you could have like several of them. <laughs> There's no know? need for revenge. You can go get a new one. <laughs> I mean, I, I okay. think revenge is, is like really really lame, anyways. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's almost no way that, that that I could be on enough drugs to go on an on a revenge okay. spree. Okay, but I want to say that I, I actually. I do think that there is some greatness here in the movie, the way it, it shows the senseless violence. And that part, I think, is really lame at first. But then, like, learning these characters, getting to, to know these characters and what, what actually happened to them actually makes it impactful, like, retroactively. And, like, yeah, you, you think the, the pregnancy thing was had no impact? I think it was really impactful to me. I Like, Jesus. Who said like it the didn't pregnancy, have an impact? No, the, the pregnancy thing is very impactful. Uh, the first I, time, I think Mumkey said it wasn't impactful. I said that. 
I might have. I don't think I did. The the first time, the first time I watched the movie, I remember being absolutely gutted with the pregnancy thing. Yeah, um, me too. I mean, it it felt really bad. So you you felt that too, Mom? Okay. No, I uh, I I mean, at that point, I felt like it was at the end of a Serbian film when uh, they they decide to rape the the three corpses at the end. I was like, okay, they're really just trying to lay on, (laughs) making this as edgy and uncomfortable and tragic as possible. So I think it was a try hard move to have the pregnancy plot. But I'm sure thematically, it's super relevant. Uh, The most embarrassing thing, my God. Oh, my fucking God. (laughs) At the end, before she knows she's pregnant, or maybe she's touching her belly, but the camera pans up and above this grown woman's bed, in her bedroom, she has a poster of the baby from 2001, A Space Odyssey. She's looking down on her, above her bed. Fucking cringe! <laughs> the theme in this oh, movie, whatever they're trying to do, is embarrassing. Oh, that's wow. base. 2001 is great. <laughs> so stupid. This fucking pregnant woman has the baby from 2001 looking down on her like she's the Earth. Yeah, that's that's something. Oh, that, that was great. For the, that was great set design. Have you ever met a woman in your life that has a, a movie poster of a good movie, f- Aquino? And don't even say yes because yeah. it's a lie. You're fucking yeah, lying. I know. Oh, I'm not Did lying. you gift it to your sister? No. Oh. Okay. So, uh, oh, you dated a girl who has a wasted hours poster. I've dated, <laughs> girl, I've dated girls who have movie posters of good movies. Okay. I know plenty unlikely, of girls. Who... Unlikely. Look, oh, he, not he, unlikely. Unlikely. Like Kino is just like a reverse heart scene where where he talks about his nerdy shit, but it actually lands with the girls. So he <laughs> well, actually no, gets... not quite. He talks about the girls, but we don't really see the evidence of them. I'm sure these girls with the great <laughs> movie posters exist in his head, but I'll have to see yeah, it to just believe out it. Out of state. Yeah. Lots of things exist in Kino's head world and not in the real world. I think. Uh, well, I just don't like to keep my uh. I just don't like to make my private life pers- or public. Yeah, <laughs> except for the movie posters of the women you're banging. What, what movie posters did they have? No, you got to tell not me. Not necessarily What's a good banging, movie just poster? like not necessarily banging, just like women friends of mine like have a uh, um, you know, it, well, it's a little bit more on the basic side. But Uh-oh. Like, <laughs> He's about, we about to say Iron Man too. Like, come on. No, no, like uh, like some posters of Criterion films or A24 movies. Like, oh boy, you know. No. Like, Real, yeah, yeah. Sure. So these women have A24 posters. That sounds like a fucking pseudo intellectual woman who wants to seem <laughs> smart to me. Oh, sure. But I mean, but wouldn't a woman who has a 2001 poster maybe also fall into that category? Yeah, that's why I'm criticizing it in this film. Because it's realistic. It was embarrassing. You have a fucking a poster of the baby from the movie above your bed, not even framed. This is a grown woman, not a fucking college student decorating his dorm. I mean, she she didn't seem like that grown most of the movie, but yeah, hmm. all right. She's in her mid twenties. I mean, it was probably a little bit on the fa- in, on the face, yeah. I just oh, can't wow, believe really? Kino's that not young? joining me in a sexist rant. I feel so alone here. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a sexist. Well, you should be. <laughs> Catch up. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm not an incel sexist, okay? Catch up. Yeah, he's, a, yeah, he's a true feminist. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a true feminist, yeah. Do we have any final <laughs> thoughts on uh, Simply Irreversible? Yeah, so what I was, what I was going to say, the other thing that he does with this time, like, bringing back, you know, having it in reverse order is um this is more on a like a film kind of like film philosophy sort of you know wavelength i guess but um and when you think about uh like i i know that he he read probably tarkovsky sculpting in time and he he read like a lot of that you know a lot of those like uh um books that i'm um, like directors and, and critics about like what film actually is and you know, and a lot of them kind of came down to this conclusion that film is is like this. Um, you know, if we're to if you're to look at a movie and it's like, what is it doing in in essence? And it is uh, it's creating something that moves in time. It's uh, it, it, you're using time like whereas painting uses you know is paint, and it's something that you can see just all at once. A film is something that's defined by time. You know, we think about run times of films. We you know, we talk about how the time is is manipulated within that runtime. Time is something of essence to 
medium. And uh, so what he does in Irreversible, and this is why I say like, it's still gut punching at the end and it's still just a very depressing movie. He does kind of give a little bit of, a, of optimism in it um, with it moving in reverse chronological order because kind of what he's doing is like undoing the events and moving it in reverse chronological order and having it's it end impossible. on... It's impossible. It's irreversible. Well, it's, Im- <laughs> it's... it's but but that but that's why the the name irreversible is kind of um, is almost like an ironic name for it because he is reversing it right now the events that happen it's like that you cannot go back from those events right it's like once you're that brutally raped you're uh, the guy that sims for you is probably in, in prison for ten years you're um, you know your boyfriend or fiance or whatever is uh, might be going to prison as well like. Those are things you can't go back from. Those are things that you you just can't reverse. Yeah. Um. But and but unless it's the straight that. cut of the movie, in which case, completely <laughs> reversible. Yeah, so still waiting for how this is helpful, though. Jesus. No, but but by using the film, but by by going back in time. I forgot that was like what he, we were trying to build up to. Was that how the film is hopeful? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But by going back in time, he takes us before it, and it kind of ends on this note of like. We're going back before this happens, and we're like undoing the night's events through film. Not to, and it's, it kind of gives this idea that like through art we can sort of um, heal like these like even the worst kind of wounds. Um, uh, that that art does have this like healing ability, um, or like he he's taken us to like better and better times and. Maybe, you know, like one way you could look at it is that night goes like, what if this is all everything that happens is this dream that she has, you know, and then the final scene, maybe it can go differently. I mean, I don't think it does. I think that we see everything that happens. No, I think that, that it is, I think it's it is the exact opposite of how what the movie ends. is trying to say. I think yeah, he is she, not the, hopeful. the woman gives a whole speech about how she thinks that all of uh, the future is pre-planned and set in stone. You can't change it. And then the film itself reinforces that belief by exactly. giving her premonition yeah. dreams, like literally showing her her own future. That then she she has a dream about walking in a red tunnel, and then that night, you know, she walks into the red tunnel. Uh, it doesn't like, even occur to her. Oh, maybe uh, my my premonition dreams that I stated earlier that I actually do have. Uh, maybe I uh, shouldn't be walking through this dangerous tunnel right now. It's like well, it's someone said. Someone said that we have. Someone said that we have free will, but no choice. And I think that that's kind of. Uh, um, I think that that's kind of where the uh, the movie takes takes place. But I'm saying that like yeah, when, no I say, when I say yeah, yeah, the movie's saying that like bad optimistic. things are going to happen to you in the future no matter what, and you can't change when, it. And yeah, not to I'm, mention that the the final. No, but message. what I am saying when I say Come that on. it's optimistic, I'm I don't mean it's like super happy go lucky. I mean that it's it's overall very depressing. It does leave us with a little bit of hope. With the whole time destroys all things. Um, that at, what? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the what part? I was gonna get to. That's the opposite of hope. It's like yeah, <laughs> I think it is like hope. you're doomed to die anyways. So I guess it's oh, fine. Like, like, sure, the concept of the the heat death of the universe gives you hope. <laughs> You know that everything I mean, that we've ever known time, will cease to exist. Time destroys all things. It destroys good things, sure, but it also destroys bad things. It will destroy um, everything. Nothing will e- exist. Eventually, yeah, everything we, we've ever known, all of humanity, it's all going to be wiped out and gone. You think that's optimistic? <laughs> I think. It, I think in this context, yeah, it, it, yeah. I think in this context, yeah, sure, it's 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 bittersweet. That's what I'll say. It, For that, who? That's kind of what I'm getting to. It's bittersweet. I mean, because so, it means that like. Time will destroy the the very bad things too. That eventually you'll be able to to move on. And what I'm saying is that with this movie, with the reverse order, he's sh- like he is doing. It, he, he's like it's an act of grace in a sense of moving it in reverse order back to the good times, back before the night goes sour. And and it's and it's kind of like he is the god of this world, right? That he's created wow. with this film, and he's like uh, he's the two thousand one baby looking down. He's undoing these these bad events, and that's kind of how it, like so. 
you feel like these events happen, but through the movie, through the reverse, this reverse cut, he's undoing those events. You know that those events are going to happen, but he's also undoing them at the same time. It's bittersweet. So, um, so it's, is this this is this nihilism, the hopeful ideology that you love so much? I don't think that the film espouses any kind of like larger like I, I don't I like people call it nihilistic. I don't think that it's necessarily nihilistic. I think it's fairly fatalistic. I mean, what um, you just said sounded like it doesn't matter. So it's not. No, it's not. It sounded that it like some matter. more beloved dub shit. Exactly. <laughs> No, it's not saying that nothing matters. I think everything Sanchez would love this matters. film. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, if you say that everything gets destroyed by time, I just think that kind of means it, it doesn't matter. It kind of. Yeah. No, things can get destroyed, but they can still matter. When the sun implodes and, and explodes and kills everything, can God defeat the sun? Will he be able to stop it? Are they going to well, fight it probably- out? 14 That's billion years from now. Anyways, <gasps> I guess we'll just go to heaven then, or hell. I'll, I'll be dead by then, so I don't care. <laughs> I want to wow. see this fight of God versus the sun, though. I mean, I, ideally, we'll, we'll either... I mean, me and Florian will be down in hell watching the, them fight, and you'll be up in heaven yeah. watching it. Well, we can all see <laughs> yeah. God versus the sun one day. <laughs> yeah, 14 billion years from now. Yeah, I can't wait. Then we'll, we'll record it, it maybe. Zikino. We're yeah, is it King of God after. versus the Sun? <laughs> Hopefully, there's good uh, <laughs> internet connection between heaven and hell. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we can get a fiber link between the two. <laughs> uh, Florian, how many stars are you going to give this fine film on Letterboxd? Uh, two stars. That's pretty much. Okay. Right. It, so it, one it, less it than was... Morbius raves Florian himself. <laughs> Hey, Morbius was fucking great. You guys, three stars is great. It. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I mean, it's it was a good, fun movie. Jesus, man, <laughs> <laughs> he was a Jesus man in some ways. Yeah, he he sure was. That Jared Leto. I mean, yeah, it, it it could have been good, but like, why does he have to keep being so goddamn annoying with the epilepsy shit? And like, jeez. The camera, obviously. You have a yeah, hypersensitivity guess... to flashing bright lights, Florian. I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess if it's like this, then I definitely don't like it. I, I definitely had yeah. to like minimize the window. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do let's do this is a Kino again, um, but bring on uh, Kurt Eichenwald and see what he thinks, especially of the <laughs> ending. Yeah, well, he'd agree with me, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> God, that ending was terrible. Just like, yeah, you, this is your hopeful message. Fucking flashing lights in, in with, with like wow. a really horrible music, you know, just just fear. Horrible music. music. The music is beautiful. I meant like fear inducing. I, I clarified. Like oh, it, it was. The, it wasn't a happy music, was it? When when it did that. So for the theatrical for the theatrical cut of the movie too, something that um you won't be able to pick up it like. If you watch it at home, they had uh, he put in like this low tone. It's like 24 hertz or something. Yeah, uh, I think throughout I, the I, entire. I no, you wouldn't. No, it's like it's something that you can't hear. Um, but it. You don't think that stress. Florian's iPhone speakers could handle that frequency? <laughs> <laughs> but it induces stress. Like it's just this low tone that you can't hear, but you you subconsciously feel it, and it just induces stress. And you don't really know why. Um, Great, but uh, are we fucking dogs that, now? As far as the half star reviews go, those don't even those don't even compare to the uh, large walkouts that it had at the Cannes Film Festival. Well, yeah, um, it was like so fucking awful at first. Like Jesus, it, it, like people if, were just like mass exodusing the, uh, it, the yeah, cinema. If, if, if you had, if you had to judge the movie from what you've seen so far, and you think that that you just in for like utter garbage for a whole one and a half hours. Hey, if I paid, if I paid money for a ticket, I'm watching the whole thing. Well, I mean, yeah, I I, I approach these movies as somebody who wants to see the most gruesome, horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. So I would never yeah. walk out of a movie for that. But I could see why most people don't want to watch a six minute simulated <laughs> rape. Like, so I, I guess I could see why people would walk the fuck out. I mean, they probably walked out before that point, right? When when is that? That's the part where I think people would walk out. 
it, 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 they, 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 they can see that as gratuitous compared to the the fun violence of the earlier scenes. <laughs> I mean, at least the camera holds still. Jesus. <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> okay. released in 2002, so like 21 years ago. What a time! So, what so how time. long does it do that stupid fucking depression tone? The entire route. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, like, this, this is art, you, like, you, you gotta rely on that shit yeah, to you gotta make trick them. anything. It's like when, you... like, McDonald's and Burger King put a special smell on the food to make you want it more, <laughs> even though it isn't actually good. I mean, Lauren, have you seen Gaspar Noe's other food. movies? No. Have you seen his other movies? Have you seen Climax? Like, it, are you asking me if I've seen <laughs> movies that are in French? <laughs> <laughs> is that the, the question you're asking me? I just want to say this too is that I like Casper Noe. He has very good taste in movies. Um, when I saw this at AFS the other night, the, they had a presenter go up there, and she had to like qualify uh, oh, God. The, the thing and be like, "Oh, Casper Noe is a bad person. You have to know that <laughs> uh, he's a provocateur and he likes to say mean things in interviews and he likes to always poke people's buttons." So. I like this movie, but I really, and you all have to really dislike Gaspar Noe as a person. How do we get him like, on the podcast? <laughs> one of my is friends it, knows him, so maybe I'll maybe I'll reach out through them. Let's get this. Actually, have a panel of controversial directors and get him and Uwe Boll. <laughs> Gaspar Noe play that sound the entire time. You know, look up Gaspar. Look up look up Gaspar Noe's favorite movies, and it's the most fucked up movies ever made. <laughs> Uh, he, I, I, Shrek I, too. Uh, oh, I although you know list. what, he okay. So this is funny about Gaspar Noe. He cried at the end of Toy Story three, but he walked out of Black Panther. Good, um, good yeah. taste. Good taste, exactly. And um, but he like he talks about the movies he likes a lot, and he introduced me to that film. I, we talked about doing a kino on it. I think we might do it later in the summer when the new restoration of it comes out. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. Oh yeah, um, I wanted to watch that. Yeah, uh, so wow. he was he was a big proponent for that. Also, angst. Like, a lot of the really fucked up movies I found have been through Gaspar Noe's recommendations that he talks about. Um, let me, uh, uh, Gaspar Noe favorites. I'll, I'll link this to you. So if you, you know you have a Friday night, with yeah. If a, I need some real kino. Yeah, if you need some real kino and you want to. And I'll put a link uh, to this in the description of this podcast as well in case you guys want to check out some some real movies after you watch this one. Speaking of which, I should give a shout out to my new favorite website, effedupmovies.com. That's E-F-F-E-D, effedupmovies.com. If you ever want to watch Irreversible or a Serbian film or really any movies in this genre for free in high quality with good subtitles, that's your website. Uh, it took me three tries to find this movie with good subtitles. So, shout out to them. So, does that yeah. one have the fewest viruses, too? It might be. Dude, F -the, I like that F -the website. Movies.com is a legend. Hell like, yeah. They've been around for a long time, like, showing... And the problem with a lot of these movies, Irreversible, not so much, because, you know, no way the director's, like, so just, like, famous, I guess, and he's able to keep it, all this stuff active but a lot of these uh really fucked up movies the studios and distributors like will be like yeah we don't want that with our brand so we're <laughs> gonna hold on to the rights but like we're not gonna re-release it we're can gonna see let it, it like nobody can see it we'll let it rot in an archive or vault somewhere and um but then there are there are sites like uh there are distributors like massacre video um who's distributing uh a lot that's my buddy's uh thing he's distributing a lot of uva bulls movies he's doing restorations of his films right now uh, vinegar syndrome and blue underground at um and severin which uh i think Sev uh severin and unearthed films unearthed films released a, a serbian film and they really on the forefront of like keeping these like edgy films alive all, all those uh um yeah all those imagine that films. look look here you go to gaspar noe's favorite movies and uh there's a great clip of him talking about how much he loves sallow or the 120 days of sodom God, um, of course he does <laughs> i wear my sallow shirt to the irreversible screening <laughs> in uh in solidarity with uh with gaspar 
Well, boys, it has been a pleasure, but as the audience is about to learn at the end of this podcast, I do have to meet up with my cousin Joey. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, almost <laughs> forgot about that foreshadowing. Wow. Yeah, so, do you guys have anything you want to plug? Well, everyone, check out my anti reviews as usual. You know, I got some some Scooby Doo still and, and all kinds of stuff. You when know? is your Skinnamarink video coming out? Oh, that's probably going to take like one or two months. I think I got two months. You already have your ideas on it, right? Just have your fucking Reese guy make the video. Well, I mean, I'll probably record it sooner, but I, I, I'd, I'd have to schedule it because it, like in the, the lore of the channel, it, I think it's going to release oh, other videos about the first. Hmm. Wow. Who cares about the lore? Dude, I yeah. couldn't even make it 10 minutes in the skin marine. Oh, yeah, good. I'm glad you hated it, because we, me, uh, Florian, and Weekend Warrior shit on it in the last episode. <laughs> Look, my yeah, I, my I, shitting I, on, on Skinamarink is going to be legendary, and the channel must be prepared for it, okay? Oh, uh, because you got to build up now. to it. <laughs> yeah. Kino, what would but, you like to plug? I, I have my new video that I put out, like, a week ago, but I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus from YouTube right now, so not really anything. A fun hiatus or a boring hiatus? Uh, no, just to work on, um, just taking some time off. To oh, you're doing movie sets. scripts, right? I'm doing movie scripts. Oh. I'm going up to New York. I'm going to be meeting up with a uh, low res here. And like, oh my God, weeks. I'm jealous. I want to meet low res. Yeah. So I'm going to be meeting up. We're doing like this writing summit thing. I am part of this event that's going on, uh, in Tribeca, uh, which is like, um, a uh, music show, James Ferraro, James Ferraro show. It's like a dime square type thing. Um, and then Emp Lemon is coming to stay at my house for like a week. The fuck? After that. What's Emp Lemon doing in Austin for a week? Um, I'm not really sure, but we're going to do some like half in the bag style videos when he's here. I'm going to show him cool. some movies. And uh, so that's wow. going to be when I come back. But I'm making a Twin Peaks set. I haven't I actually haven't made. I just have to get guests and so stuff. Just like a red down. curtain. No, I I did the uh, the zigzag flooring. Um, <laughs> that took a long time. Cool. Uh, did the zigzag flooring, the red curtains. Um, I have the uh, I have to just find chairs that look kind of the part. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be traveling a lot. Doing a, I'm I'm writing a script right now uh, about Eggy. Um, Wasted hours too. Eggie unleashed. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's gonna be kind of taxi driver esque. Um, hmm. It's gonna be about a. a I don't want to give away too much, but kind of taxi driver. Paul Schrader. Yeah, don't spoil me on this movie. I'm gonna see in three years. Oh man. <laughs> hey, no, you know, I'm gonna like. I, I, I decide like decide. I'm I gonna mean, try to write something that I can make here in Austin. With the stuff you know that I have, um, you, you did spoilers on on this movie. Like if we wouldn't, have, we're not a, we might not have figured out that it's reversed. You know, hey, the Egg Driver <laughs> movie is not comparable to Irreversible. Okay, you can spoil some piece of shit movie like this, but some real Kino is being cooked up right now. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of which, much like Irreversible, we will end with the beginning. So feast your ears on what we said before the show started. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye. I see it. <laughs> okay, I'm recording. Right, no more N-words, Florian. Stop dropping that N-bomb on, on my Discord call. N no. <laughs> the N-word is no? Yeah, that's what I meant. You're supposed to say yes, like that lady in the tunnel. <laughs> God that's what happened, right? <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. She was consenting, I think. <laughs> Oops. Wow. Uh, cutting this part out. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah, like, yeah. Is she a human tragedy that unfolded? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. Yeah. And ironically, indeed, truly, yeah, sure. so truly. Just love learning, like why that rape was extra bad. You know, would have never guessed. Oh, my cousin Joey's calling. One sec. Yo, what's up, cousin Joey? <laughs> yeah, what's up? I'm literally recording a podcast right now. But what's up? Is this a bit? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. My cousin Joey said he got a death threat from Stephen Hawkins. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, Joey? <laughs> I'll be probably done in an hour. <laughs> what? Legends? Where's that? 
Yeah, that's not a bit. <laughs> uh, okay. You want to meet up or something? I heard a little bit of uh Oh, the uh his end, the so. park, the state park. Yeah, I, I'll meet you out uh, there later today. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Let me know when you're there. We'll be there. All right, see you. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, is this part of the episode? <laughs> Should it be? It's really not that interesting. No. I was lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know you if he knows who Stephen Hawkins what? is. Did we even start to begin with? Well, you tell oh, me. Started. I never said welcome to Isaac Kino. Yeah, we I haven't mean, started. I mean, it's good to shake it up sometimes. I'll put all of this at the okay. end of the episode. How's that sound? <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah, ready? Yeah, ready? Yeah. Reverse that that keynote. That's <laughs> yes. That, no, every ten minutes should be in reverse order for the <laughs> <laughs> so they listen to our opinions in reverse order the whole podcast. That'd be good. Yeah, it starts <laughs> off with is it keynote and us saying yes or no, and then it goes. <laughs> yeah. So no, it starts off with the plugs for what everybody should check out. <laughs> well, yeah. it actually starts out with me killing Kino Corner, and then we, oh, we find out why later. No, know? it starts off with me saying. I fucked my daughter while naked in a bed next to some <laughs> dude, and then does that ever get explained? Who the fuck were those people, Kino? Look, like, I'll the explain only that. Way, the only way that makes explained. sense is like that must well, the have movie. Been, no, no, th this been... is this is for the topic because Irreversible is a sequel. What? Oh my fucking god! Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is at the end. So, bye, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> now we're gonna start the show. <laughs> Okay. I mean, that, that might have been great. To Lauren, please to stop. The For the love of God, please stop. <laughs> I want to start the show <laughs> so desperately. Okay, fine. <laughs>